Hello, this is Dr. Kenneth Candido from Chicago demonstrating the techniques of Atlanto occipital and Atlanto axial joint injections. The C0 uh, and 1 and C12 joints are not really true diarthrodial zygopophyseal joints, but there is a capsule actually. And what I'm going to talk about now is the use of this technique for mediating and mitigating the pain associated with cervicogenic headaches and rheumatoid arthritis primarily and neck pain, non-specific neck pain, where there is not an identifiable cause aside from the atlanto-occipital and atlanto-axial joints. The greatest considerations are safety. So every patient must have a free-flowing intravenous line before commencing AA and AO joint injections. Sedation is not obligatory. Some individuals, including myself, do not utilize sedation for this purpose. I perform this procedure with the patient in the prone position and start off with the fluoroscopy unit posterior to anterior and then lateral. I will demonstrate now for you the relevant anatomy and then the technical steps essential to successful performance of atlanto occipital and atlanto axial joint injections, which may be done in tandem in the same individual on the same side. So we wouldn't do bilateral joint injections right and left on the same patient at the same setting, but we could do an AO atlanto-occipital and an AA atlanto-axial joint injection on the same patient on the same side on the same setting. I use a 22 gauge three and a half inch quinky type cutting bevel needle for almost all of these techniques and I typically place a curve at the distal tip about a centimeter from the tip of the needle when I perform these procedures for easier steering. The relative and relevant anatomy demonstrates here on the skeleton we can clearly see the C1, C2 joint here, also known as the atlanto-axial joint, and the C0, C1 joint here, known as the atlanto-occipital joint. The most important anatomical landmark, aside from bony landmarks, is the presence of the vertebral artery, which leaves the foramen magnum laterally and swings out medially through the foramen transversarium. So it must be reconciled when we consider doing these blocks to stay away when possible from the vertebral artery. Now I'm going to perform these techniques on a specimen in the prone position, arms at the side, a bolster is placed beneath the chest and the head and neck are gently flexed forward to patient satisfaction. After I perform a sterile skin prep and drape, I anesthetize the appropriate anatomical lo locations. I use lidocaine 1% without epinephrine, typically two to four mLs with a 27 gauge 1.5 inch needle. And then I take a scalp foam and the scout film clearly demonstrates the atlanto-axial joints bilaterally and the atlanto-occipital joints bilaterally. So the first thing I'm going to do here after anesthetizing the skin is to assess my anatomical landmarks using fluoroscopy. Picture please. And I'm starting off somewhat lateral, so I'm going to gently move medially here to the right side. Picture please. And I'm going to make my skin entry point through my local anesthetic skin wheel and gently drop my needle down towards the atlanto-axial joint. Picture, please. And before I get to a depth greater than about two centimeters, picture, please. I'm gonna gently advance, picture. And then I'm gonna move laterally. You can see that I'm entering the joint space in the center of the joint space because we anticipate the vertebral artery swinging out laterally to medially. So by staying in the center of the joint, in this case, the atlanto axial joint, I'm going to try to minimize trespass on the vertebral artery. Picture. And so we can see here, this is where the joint space is. The vertebral artery is housed in the foramen transversarium here, and I'm going to advance until I feel a gentle pop through the tissues. Picture please. And I'm where I'd like to be, I'm in the center of the atlanto-axial joint. You can see that clearly here, and I'm posterior to the vertebral artery, and hopefully I am uh, a little bit lateral to the vertebral artery. Come back to the PA position, please. Next in tandem, I'm going to proceed with the atlanto-occipital, or C0, C1 joint injection. So there's my needle situated here in the center of the atlanto-axial joint. And now I'm going for the next joint, at the base of the skull, the atlanto-occipital joint. And I'm gonna start out again in the posterior to anterior orientation. 
and not advanced more than about a centimeter and a half or so picture. And you can see I'm also directly in the central portion of the atlanto-occipital joint on the right side. May I have a lateral, please? Once again, the target and the goal is to avoid the trespass of the vertebral artery. And by staying in the central portion of this space, I hopefully have accomplished that. So now I will need to advance my needle somewhat more anteriorly, and I'm doing that now. Picture. And there, I have just about entered there, I think there's a pop in my specimen. And now I am in the atlanto-occipital joint and I am in the atlanto-axial joint. Two joint injections performed. You can see how the needles line up with each other, pretty much parallel like a picket fence. The two needles for the atlanto-occipital and the atlanto-axial joint injections. And we, of course, aspirate before we inject. I typically inject. Uh, small aliquot 0.5 ml of a non-ionic water-based uh, soluble contrast agent. I look for containment of the spread and not vascular uptake. And if that's successful, then I will inject a combination of a local anesthetic, typically bupivacaine plain 0.25% with a non-particulate steroid, also known as a soluble steroid, typically on the order of dexamethasone sodium phosphate preservative free approximately one to two milligrams. The total volume of injectate is about uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 and sometimes up to 1.0 mLs. And that is the technique of atlanto-occipital and atlanto-axial joint injections. I thank you for your time and attention.